Um, my name is Wei Han Lin, and I'm the CPU architecture lead in Tenstore. So it's so good to be here to speak to you in person after the pandemic. So the topic I'm going to talk about today is a uh, high performance RISC-V CPU for computation, acceleration, and server. Agenda, um, I will introduce, of course, Tensorin. So I have been working this project for about one and a half years, so kind of in a stealthy, right? So now I finally we see the daylights. So I want to introduce what uh, our RISC-V CPU design is, right? And then mainly focus on why we're building RISC-V and then how you're actually using our in the computation acceleration in the server. And then, then I talk about the chip that strategy, right? So the chip that is composability, how you actually expand easily for our tensor and building a wide variety of different kind of product with the chip that. So Tensor and finally in 2016, right? So it has an ambition actually building the, the best uh, machine learning uh, training and inference chips, 230 million raised so far, 280 employee, right? So it's still quite small for the project we're actually working on in five different offices, Toronto, Santa Clara, Austin, Belgrade, and Bangor. And we hire a world-class team from AMD, ARM, NVIDIA, Apple, Atera, and also the top research institution in the world, right? So we really have two machine learning chips because the company's starting quite early. Grayskull and Wonho. So I will briefly talk to you about that as well in production. We are working on the third table. So last year when I joined Tensor, I was asked to evaluate the companion CPU for our machine learning processor. Right? And we went to ARM. Um, we asked for a certain data type to be supported, but they say no. And this is the one of the reason we are actually choosing a RISC V processor right, from Sci Fi. And then now we need more performance. We decided to build our own. So we are building a great RISC-V CPU, which I'm going to share with you to work with the AI. And RISC-V is really where the innovation is. That's why we choose the RISC-V as the ISA for us to work on. So why the RISC-V, right? I want to draw this very interesting analogy to the success of Linux from 1990 to 2010. So I don't know how many people here remember, right? So at that time, there are so many proprietary operating system, proprietary you know, system, right, with a different ISA, very expensive workstation, right? So why did Linux actually take over the world? So during that period of the time, due to its rapid innovation, so open source Linux start taking over the server operating system from proprietary server OS, like from Digital, Sun, and IBM, right? But however, you have to remember the rapid success of Linux was also driven by the Intel introducing a high performance Pentium CPU with a great price performance ratio. Right? I remember I was working in a startup 2003, right? And you see how uh, actually $2,000, right? Linux plus Pentium CPU, right? Workstation is replacing the $10,000 Sun workstation with the same performance, right? In a logic synthesis application. So this success, the software innovation has to be coupled with the best price performance hardware platform, right? This is why it make Linux actually a success, right? So Tensor in here is actually trying to build the best performance price, right, chips to power the data center. So we certainly believe the open source innovation and coupled with the best price performance chips we are building, right, mean the disruption to the data center. So let me introduce you this um, Tensor High Performance Risk V Processor Ascalon. Right? So Ascalon designs the end to be disruptive high performance processor for AI in the server with the best performance and also the power efficiency. Right? So Ascalon is an all order super scalar processor with an advanced branch prediction unit. It has an AY decoder. Right? Three low slow pipeline coupled with the large low slow queue in there and six integer ALU, two branch pipeline. It coupled also with the two 256 big vector units and two floating point units, right? So our engineer has been working on the RTL and the physical design for the chips. The die photo you see on the right is actually the PD shot for our Escalon core. So the design is on the way.
So how we design the ASCON CPU? Right? So this is actually, CPU design is very, very complex. I came from Apple, right? So for their, working there for 13 years, design CPU. And then I've been seeing like the big company left and right try to do the CPU, they fail, right? So why is it so complex? Because functionally is already quite complex. But meeting the PPA demand, right? Performance power in the area goal, make it even harder. That's why you need such a big, big design team for the CPU, right? So designing this high performance CPU is not only about architecture innovation, right? So we actually starting with a clean sheet, right? So Jim and I were thinking about, we also need to do the design for innovation as well. So what does that mean? So we partition a very complex design to modularity, right? With a well-defined module and a clean interface, right? We make sure the module description, right? This modularity description is actually translated into all level of the abstraction of the design, right? What does this mean is that we can take one module, right? With a clean interface description and plug it into the our level of abstraction and code simulator, right? This is how you make the design module specification actually being checked. This is also how you actually ensure design is being converged quickly. So our team, right, also building the performance model from scratch, right? So this is actually quite significant because perform model is actually serving as a golden model for microarchitecture specification, right? So we are team building the uh, event-driven and cycle-accurate performance model from scratch. It also has its own GUI interface, being able to debug and also analyze the simulation. As a consumer of performance model, I also write it myself. 80% of the time, what you spend on the performance model is actually analyze the performance you are writing is only about 20%. So a tool with a very easy debuggable interface is critical for performance model. We also building the tracing from scratch, right? Tracing the way simple point tracing from scratch. So for example, spec in, right? 2K6, 2K17 benchmark, right? We compile with the GCC LVN compiler, right? And then we simulate in our tensor and whisper functional simulator. And then we doing the simple point, you know, tracing using the cluster and the simple point algorithm and collect the represent trace. So now we have spec 2K6 in the floating point, spec 2K17 in the floating point, and this is basically using as a foundation for our performance study. So with the design methodology, right, so we talk about what would, what's our design goal, what's our design methodology to facilitate the design conversion, and then the next thing we, talk, we have is that using this design methodology, we start designing this wide spectrum of the CPU, all over the CPU, right? So as you, so our team, Shrikan will talk about this uh, UC Berkeley Sony Boone derivative with our tensor and vector user later in the section, right? So it's open source and you can download it, right? So it's our contribution to RISPI community. But at the same time, our team is designed this AYD called High Performance Risk by ASCOM Processor, right? With the mindset that this design can be parameterized down to 6Y decode, 4Y decode, 3Y decode, and 2Y decode machine. So that's mean with this very solid AY decode machine, right, we actually enable Tensor to expand this solid ASCOM design foundation and to a family of the super stellar processor with the different PPA goal, right? This is a very significant. So in one single design, in very short period of time, Tensor actually come up with a five different derivative from this design. This will be able for us to use in this process of a different PPA design goal in our product. So how does the ASCOM core, right, being composed together to form a much larger system? So we form an ASCOM cluster, right? So there are eight ASCOM high performance core with a share 12 megabyte cache, right? So this, this cluster actually support intra-cluster coherency among the core, right? So they can talk cache coherency among each other, right? You also a companion with this uh, 260, 230, 
gigabyte per second tri coherent bus talk to the external fabric. And at the same time, we have the uh, non coherent bus, right, 230 gigabyte per second non coherent bus, using for the accelerator message passing. Right, this is important for the air acceleration. I will explain how to use this bus. Right? So the 12 megabyte cache also enable you to partition it, right, to coherent, sorry, coherent cache and also message passing scratch pad memory. So this enable the Ascolon core not only as a high performance core for you know, regular server, but you can be using it as a part of the AI computation. So the cluster is then used to compose a 128 core CPU chip that, which I will show you in the next slide. So this is called EGIS chip that system architecture, right? So the cluster, CPU cluster, are connected to the directly based cache coherent chai fabric to form a 128 core ASCOM based EGIS CPU system. So you can see that the EGIS is actually partitioned into four quadrants, right? Each quadrant is a CC Numa machine, which is local interconnect, IO interconnect, right? Non coherent interconnect. It also has its local system cache. You also connect to its memory subsystem. So um, EGIS will be implemented as a chip that, as you show on the right, right? As you show in the flow plan, right? EGIS chip that has a die-to-die -die interface with IO coherent port, right? Non-coherent port, and also the memory subsystem bus, right? So this EGIS system is actually very compelling server-grade 128 core system with a CHI protocol in there, right? So it's a fully coherent system. And it's also a four different CC neural machine. I think this is a really a high performance design for using the server system. So, so in the next slide, I will talk about risk by CPU application in, in the AI. So before I do that, I want to review uh, Tensor and Prada very quickly, right? So as I mentioned there earlier, two chip coming back, right? So 2020. We have the grayscale chip, 12 nanometer, right, PCIe. The T cell you see here is our accelerator, so it's a 2D torus connected among each other, right. PCIe is using to connect to whole CPU. 2012, 21, we have the one hole coming back, right. It's kind of derivative from the grayscale, right. One thing we added there is that the Ethernet port for the scalability, which I will talk about why you need the scalability in, in AI computation, right. And the black hole is the one we actually currently working on. You can see that we start introducing this column with the green column here. This is what we call companion CPU for machine learning processing, right? So this is the, the uh, RISPI chip I talked earlier. It's a license from Sci-Fi X280, right? And then Grendel is the one I'm actually working on whether ask is going to be used. This is really an advanced process, right? Of course, many, many 200, 128 core, Ascalon core companion CPU in there. So I really like this picture, so I, I cannot help to share with you. This is created by our marketing team, right? So it's just give you a kind of logical architecture view about our air accelerator. So 106 core accelerator is connected to the, this two dimensional torus interconnect, right? So you, you connect to the DDR memory and then you connect to the RISPI coprocessor, right? You also has the Ethernet for the scalability. You also have the PCIe, right? <clears throat> um, so, so kind of marking this slide for us as well. So the grayscale system, right? So they come in with a two board with the two, two different form factors. Smaller board, 70 watt, five watt is using for like uh, embedded system or age, right? You require the process, require the power consumption is lower. We also have high performance chip, can contain bigger board, contain two, one to two chips. Right? So those board can be used to build like a workstation, two to four board, or building a server, right? So contain a board, because each board can contain up to two chips, so you can have a 16 chips in there. Then the second generation one hole product, as I mentioned, right, it's actually using for AI at the scale. That's mean you can infinitely almost connect them together to solve a much bigger problem, right? So this is N300 chips, right, Nebula, 
single or dual chips, like one whole chip configuration, right? They can be using, like building this very, very impressive server, Nebula server here, right? It's a high density AI server in for you, right? Enclosure for Rack system. Right? It complies with 32 and 300 devices, right? So you have backplane interconnect, active cooling units, and also, of course, our software SDK, right? You can reach 12 petaflop at the six kilowatt. So after you understand our machine learning processor, I want to talk about how our ASCO and chip can be using the machine learning processor, right? So first, the CPU can be the whole CPU, right? So the ASCO and CPU can be the whole CPU. Replacing the x86, right? You can do virtualization, security, system management, and also computation kernel scheduling setup. So this is basically the management task happening in the AI system. The next one is actually more interesting, right? So the CPU for AI computation, right? So some people may not be aware CPUs actually play a very, very important role in AI computation, especially in the training, right? So does everyone know like in the data center, right? How much CPU power is spent in the AI training, right? It's not 10%, it's not 20%, it's more than 50%. The time and the power, right? spending on the CPU pre-processing and post-processing the data. So CPU play a very, very important role in the data center. And a lot of people say that the AI computation is about acceleration, but it's not. It's also about the CPU. And that's why we integrate it, right? So I'll give you one example here is that, you know, um, CPU can pre-process in the data to introduce a training data variation to avoid the overfeeding to the AI training, right? So the next application of the uh, CPU in AI is actually if CPU high performance, if you couple with the very powerful vector units, right? It can be using for the adaptive computation resource for future AI algorithm. So AI algorithm has to change in constantly, right? So whatever you are building, the AI system addressing the AI algorithm today, three years down the road, it might be not work well, right? So if you have a CPU as a companion processor coupled with very powerful vector units, right, like we integrated here, right, you actually enable the compiler to move in the computation very easily among the accelerator and the CPU. Right? This is just like give you such a flexibility, right? Instead of going through the PCIe bus, right, you actually go into this eat local interconnect with terabytes of the bandwidth, right, easily moving the computation around the chip, right? This is how powerful our system is, right? Give you that flexibility. So when we're building the CPU, we actually has a mindset that putting our overlay, proprietary overlay technology to ensure that the CPU has the same topological capability as our accelerator. So at the same time, we also introduce the scratch pad memory into the CPU so they can have the same kind of message passing capability as well. So therefore, our machine learning compiler actually able to map in the computation with almost a similar kind of the, you know, topological and the message passing, right, capability, and they can compile the computation, right, easily down to the binary for the target system, either as a machine learning accelerator, right, our tensor core or our CPU. That's just how flexible our system is. So Tensor is not only a chip company, right? So if you want to address the machine learning problem, right, you have to have the SDK, right? So the SDK here, right, I only have five minutes left, so I, I better survey, right? So the SDK here, basically, you can see that you're mapping the PyTorch all the way down to parallelize, personal in all the hardware, so this is a static mapping, right? All the way down to our, you know, the binary SQ in the hardware, right? So, this is a very significant, right? So I will have to go fully automate the path for all popular machine learning framework and I optimize presentation. High quality result with a no manual effort, right? So no hand holding, compile and direct down to the hardware, right? Same compiler target for one chip and many thousand chip, right? So this is our goal. So CPU is also very important on the data movement, right? So 
we talk about convergence between data center computation, sorry, high performance computation and data and, and machine learning, right? But why is that? Because machine learning is actually going at such a fast pace, right? So this is just to give you a chart showing that, that 2012, right, the computation actually requirement for machine learning actually go at double every 3.5 months. But semiconductor process is driven by more low double chances every two to three years right now. So there's just this disparity, just there's no way that you can use in the manufacturing technology to address the computation demand. So whatever computation module you are defined today for acceleration the AI, you have to look into the scalability, right? So that many chip can talk to each other and solving a much bigger problem, right? That's why people introduce this DPU concept. But if you look on the DPU inside, right? It's a packet header examination of network packet, right? There are a lot of CPU in there as well, right? You can see that this regular structure here, right? The 16 high performance CPU core. So Ascom can be also using a facility the packet processing in the data moment, right? So this is a very, very important because I went to SC22. The people start talking about is not only computation centric computation, right? People talking, really talking about data movement. How you efficiently move in the data movement, right? So our user chip can be using as a server as well, right? So this is just to give you an example. A system you can build, right? So each server 128 core coupled with the uh, memory chip that, right? And coupled with the uh, PCIe or IO chip that, right? Compose them together, we form a high performance server, right? So you can optionally connect to the AI accelerator or you can connect to you know, MPEG decoder if you want to do like video surveillance, high performance surveillance system. Right. Chip that, right. Um, we like chip that because chip that has strong, you know, um, um, design reuse and is composability, give you the flexible to compose of the system you want to do, right. So this is just give you an example, easy system, right, 128 code with our machine learning as error, the tell DDR channel and IO. So this is the EG server, right? So 128 core with the six DDR, you know, chip that, two IO chip that, right? And if you need a high performance memory, right, you can of course go to the HPN, right? Summary, right? So Tensor is actually building this wonderful and high performance CPU, right? So I'm coming from Apple and then Danbury, which is PDD, used to be senior field at MD and Tesla, right? So he's leading our physical design, Streetcom. Right, it's our RTO DVD. He used to be a fellow in the uh, AMD, right? Also Cerebus. So we have the CPU team somewhere around 80. We are hiring, right? And Tensor is setting on to build the next generation computer, right? Our mission is to address the open source compute demand for software 2.0 to the industrial reading, right? AI and machine learning accelerator. Of course, with the high performance CPU, yeah. I talked about why the CPU is so important in AI computation, right? And also infinitable configurable chip that, right? So I start thinking Tensor is not only an AI company, it's a high performance computing, right? With the machine learning acceleration technology, with the CPU, high performance CPU technology, with the software stack, right? With the networking technology, and also with the chip that technology, we can actually compose any kind of system for the market we actually like to go. Either as a server, machine learning training, automobile, any market we can go, right? So we believe that the AI computation, right, given the scale of the computation, it becomes a high performance computing. So you have to solve this problem holistically by looking to the software framework, compiler, operating system, right, memory architecture, computation architecture, networking architecture, right, micro architecture, right, physical design manufacturing technology, packaging technology, all holistic to solve this problem, right? Tenstora is a 230, 280 people company, right? We actually own all this very complicated technology, right? We own the hardest machine learning, right, for the training. We own high, highest performance CPU. We own the networking technology, right? So we are really unique in this startup space, and we're working really challenging problem. So if you're a person like to working on very difficult technical challenging problem, right, come to join us. This will be an excellent, excellent playing field for your brain. Thank you. <laughs>